Hey guys, Armin Gun here. Gonna talk about the Benelli M4, a little Gun 101 on this guy. Gonna try and keep it pretty quick, but I'll give you the uh, the 401 on this on this guy here. So this one chambered in 12 gauge. Basically, this this gun came out of this is also the uh, the tactical you know like the tactical collapsing stock, which is pretty slick. Benelli was funny about selling those for quite a while. They seem to have loosened up now. Sometimes it requires literally ordering the part from Italy, though. Um, I don't know. They just don't like to seem to just like to sell them to civilians with this stock because this was their Benelli tactical version that was meant for military and LEO, which is how this gun came to be in the first place. So it's May 1900, or well, it's sometime in 1998. The U.S. military decides they want a new combat shotgun that's semi-automatic, and Benelli comes to the table with the M4, which is this bad boy. And man, she is, she is bad. So, I'll just open the action, show she's clear before I'm throwing all over the place. Again, chambered in 12 gauge. This was Benelli's first gas-operated gun. And the system that they used was called the Auto Regulating Gas Operated, which stood for, you know, the acronym for that is Argo, which is this is said to have the Argo gas system. And it's highly reliable. It's comprised of two stainless steel, like, pistons that run inside little, you know, housing. And they run the gun. So the cool thing is they're both self-cleaning, but I mean, like, it's a Benelli, it's an expensive gun. Like, if you're gonna shoot lots, you're probably gonna pull them apart once in a while and make sure they're clean. Um, because they will, you know, get carbon on them eventually. But self-regulating was the main idea, and that's so that you can run, you know, low-powered two and three-quarter inch target shot, or, you know, other low-powered rounds like beanbags. Sometimes beanbags, they still have to be manually operated, which is fine, it does that. Uh, but go right from this to the three inch you know slug and interchangeably with no adjustments just throw them in the tube one after the other whatever you want and it's just gonna run which is really cool so that's what that system does really well and again the gun comes with the pick rail uppers you can throw optics on it if you want the benelli is known for its super slick ghost ring sights those things are unbelievably cool and and just effective Though, I would have to say an RMR on top is probably the way to run it, from, from the, my opinion. And uh, there's a company now that makes a really slick little, like, flat one that drops the RMR really far down. I'm not sure. It might even be co-witness with the factory irons. I'm not sure, but it uh, it's pretty slick. And I would probably look to get one of those eventually. Though, one, throwing an aim point or something else on here looks pretty good as well. Anyways, then I've also got a Bruger and Tomit, uh quad rail. Kind of unnecessary, because I don't gonna plan to put anything up here anyways. You could run a flashlight and a uh, laser sight on the side, though this is already like a, you know, that's a little flashlight rail right there. This really just adds weight, but it's Spinel or b and so I thought, ah, it's cool. It came with a gun too, I got it used, so that was a little bonus. Same with this little breacher choke tube up there. But honestly, this gun is super slick. You've got your, this is an extended charging handle, this is a GG and G. Uh, aluminum side saddle just for extra rounds, the way that works is... You just have your rounds kind of captured in there like this. And then when you've, you know, shot your first rounds, you flip it over. Or you can have, you know, you can have target load in here. Or if you're in a ride situation, you could have, you know, beanbag rounds down here. You just pop them off. You can single load them or you can, you know, throw them in the, uh, in the, you know, in the tube itself. So it's a pretty cool system. And again, just a super slick action. Mine's been well broken in. Again, it was a used gun, so mine, mine or cycles seven and a half inch, seven and a half target load flawlessly. And I've got a shooting video that I'll be uploading the same time as this one, along with the disassembly, disassembly video. Go check those out. But yeah, I'll, I'll shoot it in person, and you can uh, check that out. Again, this is the collapsible buttstock. You can also it's got a th I think three different positions plus a takedown notch, and you can also get a uh, fixed position stock as well. But this is really, this is the one you see in the movies and the video games, so that's, and it's just, I like, I like being able to class guns down as well. It's better for storage, better for just, I don't know, handling purposes as well, so. The reason they did this, apart from those reasons I just mentioned, was military applications, being that, you know, guys would have plate carriers on, they'd have armor, armor bulletproof vests and stuff, and, you know, it's with a long, typical length of pull-fixed shotgun, you know, stock, you can have this thing way out in front of you by the time it hits your plate carrier. So this way you can run it collapsed. And it's still the proper length of pull, which is pretty cool. Something neat, they tested these for, and apparently it achieved 25,000 rounds before anything at all needs to be maintained on the gun. So that's definitely 
definitely handy for, for that purposes. And I think that's all the cool facts that I have on it. It's still in use today. It's used by a ton of different militaries. Again, I think it was tested in 20, 1998 and was produced as of 1999 regularly. So pretty cool gun. Um, other than just cross box safety. I think I've covered all the interesting details though. So I think I'm going to leave it right there. Thanks a lot, guys. Catch you next time.